Gentlemen, welcome to the Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. I am joined by the host of the Dollop Podcast and also a recent winner of the Political Vigilante Game Show in a heated contest against Gareth. Or no, did you lose? I won. You won. That's right. Gareth. <laughs> I would not lose to Gareth. <laughs> Come on. Come on. He had, a right. little, he had a little lead at the beginning because I was letting him fuck around and then I just took right. him down so hard. That's so great um, yeah. that you punished him uh, on a live stream. Yeah, that's right. You won handily 10 six. Gareth couldn't had nothing in the late rounds. He couldn't even come back terrible. at all. And he didn't even understand the strategy of like, you're losing. So you just need to raise your hand first and throw out a, something to have a chance. That's right. And he didn't even know how to do that. No, he's a dummy. He's a dummy. <laughs> By the way, this is vegan. It's uh, water. Oh, vegan water. I love when they put that on. Yeah. It's gluten free. Oh, really? There's no wheat <laughs> gluten in water. Wow. Thanks. Um, I had no idea. Um, well, Dave, we wanted to bring you on the show. Um, first of all, just to celebrate everything that's so great. If you're a progressive lefty socialist, it is everything is going our way. And uh, the, <laughs> the, Oh, it's so great to tell everybody what's going to happen, and then it happens, and then they just yell at you for saying it was going to happen. Yeah. Wasn't it great a year ago as when Bernie bailed? Wasn't that great to celebrate that? Yeah, this is our last no, hope. Um, he dropped out like someone had a gun to Jane's head. Yeah. I mean, literally, the rumors are they threatened to, there's some scandal against her, and they were going to prosecute her and put her in jail, yeah. or which I wouldn't be, because the way he dropped so hard, I'm like, and he wasn't perfect. We all knew this. He was just the furthest no. left of any mainstream candidate that had a shot and had a legitimate shot. Yeah. He dropped so hard. I was like, I literally was like, oh, did yeah. they threaten his grandkids? I wasn't joking. I'm like, seriously, did they go that old Bill Hicks joke of like, yeah. the president gets, gets elected and they show them the real Zapruder film and they're like, any questions? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, yeah, that's the, how it seemed. Yeah. Like, uh, Bobby Kennedy thought he had a shot too. Uh huh. Yep. Um, <laughs> so uh, that, I don't know how that turned out. I don't read history. Did, did yeah. you know, <laughs> I think he just dropped out. I think he just said, I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm out of politics. I'm a Kennedy. Politics really isn't our thing. Um, yeah, they don't care. They don't care. So it's been a fantastic year. Um, and we are now in the, I mean, thank God. The one thing that Biden has is doing well is rolling out the vaccines. He said he was going to do that. Yeah. Okay. I'll give him credit. He's getting a lot of people that, vaccinated. That's it's literally the only reason I said to vote for him. Like I know that he's going to create a more fascist state, but he's also going to get the vaccine out. That was always the thing. He was always going to have a better response to the fucking bullshit that Trump was trying to make money off of. And you know, tr Trump, it, when he ran out of storage, which his companies were taking care of for the virus, like he was funneling the storage money to himself. That's why all of a sudden they stopped because he's like, well, who else is going to do it? I don't want someone else to make money. I mean, that's why he didn't order enough vaccines. He's just a fuckhead. So like, yeah, everything is everything's going to get worse under Biden. We're still in the same track, just going straight to fascism. But right now there would be 700,000 dead people and no end in sight if Trump was still in office. I mean, it would just yeah. be crazy. Yeah, it's that's absolutely true. And literally, and we said this last spring and summer, we're like, if Trump, when the virus first happened, I'm like, if he handles the virus correctly, he won't lose. I mean, if he would have said, yeah. here's stimulus money, um, yeah. it, it's 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 really, hold on, I'm getting it. Uh, scroll still says show starting. Oh, let me change this real quick. Um, no, but th that's, that's uh, absolutely... Had he handled it correctly, had he given everybody UBI and Medicare for all, it would have been like, he's not, he's never, he, he's not going to lose. He, he would have, they would have been changing the laws to make him a third term president right now. Like he would have never yeah. been out of office. If he had just said lockdown, this is really serious. Let's, let's get all the tests in shape. Let's get everyone ready for this. He would, he would be an emperor right now. Like it, it would, he would have slaughtered the Democrats. Yes. And you know, uh, but he bungled it. And that's the main reason people voted for Biden. It was like, nobody was excited about Joe Biden. Nobody was like, yeah, well, they were they just like, now. 
Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> well, <laughs> before we get into the, uh, the greatest rescue of poverty ever lie that <laughs> this bill, with this, I mean, like, okay, really? Before we get into that, um, and we'll break that down a little later. I wanted to talk to you because you live in LA and you are dealing with, like a lot of parents are, schools opening and mm -hmm. the insanity that is going on with that, you know? And I, I understand, I mean, I don't have any kids of my own, but I understand like, oh my God, my kids have been homeschooling for the last year. Everybody's cabin fever, crazy sick. But like, because there is a little, we're seeing a little light at the end of the tunnel with the vaccines. And it's like initially Biden said in July, now it's June, maybe even May. And I, I'm actually, I believe him because I see how quickly they're rolling this out, but they're, they're opening up way too soon in so many other ways. And our, our stupid two party system makes one party in this instance, the Republicans going, ha, ha we're going to stick it to Biden by opening early. No, you're going to ruin the lives of your citizens in Texas, but go for it. I mean, they already, you know, they don't, they already had, they just went through a crisis of, of having the grid go down, but <laughs> you know, Democrats are opening up early also because yep. Biden made the hundred, you know, we got to get kids back in school in like a hundred days or whatever it was. And then, you know, the thing people aren't talking about is the testing companies are lobbying for this because standardized test standardized testing happens in April and they want those kids in the fucking schools because you can't test at home. Then it's not, then it's what that's not testing. So they want the fucking kids in school. And so a lot of this is a push by Pearson and these other goddamn companies, which the testing is just already shouldn't be happening. I mean, it's just fucking garbage. The teachers can't look at the tests. If they, if they look at a test, they get fired. Uh, the kids, the kids never know what their scores were. The teachers don't know what the scores. It's just fucking nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. And so they're pushing to make those tests happen because they want kids in school to do that. I didn't know that, but uh, like it, it, yeah. it's, it's, it's it, typical of this dumb country. It maddens me and then goes, oh, well, that makes sense. They're doing another dumb thing because capitalism to the rescue to yeah. ruin everything. Like we're not doing, God, we have no society. We have no, like what's for the greater good. It's just, Hey man, Pearson needs to make their money. So jam these kids and teachers back in school and let's do it. So ah, damn it. It's so frustrating, but like, Kind of watching, I obviously, I, you know, like I said, I don't have kids, but, you know, LA Unified School District is a massive school district. Yeah. Um, and I'm watching them on the local news that the head of that LAUSD talk about how they want to do this. And some of the teachers, you know, it's kind of some teachers and some teachers union said, I'm not going back until I get vaccinated, yeah. um, which I get, which I get. Um, it's also, uh, it's a fucking month away. What? It why are you fucking rushing? They've been out for a fucking year. Now, all of a sudden, a month away, you're going to let them get vaccinated. Right. It's it's just around the fucking... What are you rushing for? Oh, I know. there's testing. Oh, it, it's the only thing I can think of is testing, testing, testing. Uh, it, it's crazy because, like, yeah, it's just a month. Just wait. What? Like you said, we've all been here a year. What's another month? Like, what's, yeah. what's another 60 days? I mean, literally, like, well, I feel like a convict, a long-term convict. That's like, I can do 60 days standing on my head. I can do this dumb <laughs> pandemic another 60 days. I know how to do this. Like, boo-hoo. I'll wear my mask and stay inside and talk to myself in the dark. I mean, what the fuck else am I going to do? Like, so there, there's this whole uh, narrative that's been formed, which is that all these kids are having mental health issues right. because they're home. Well, are they having mental health issues because they're home? Or are they having mental health issues because their uncle died or their fucking mom died or because they're watching society send right. their parents to shitty fucking jobs with no protection? It, right. Maybe that's affecting their mental health. Maybe looking at the news and seeing 500,000 dead is affecting their fucking mental health. And it's not about being on a computer during uh, during the day, which is what they fucking do all the time anyway. Like there are also if you talk to other parents, there are kids that are thriving online because they didn't like school. They didn't like getting up at 7 a.m. because they have this thing called zero period now where some kids have to get up at 7 a.m. and go to fucking school. Now they can sleep into 830 like the science says they're supposed to do. Kids are not. You hit 11, 12. You're not supposed to get up early. Your body doesn't want it anymore. So there are kids adjusting to this and they're thriving and you're not hearing that at all. 
but there's a ton of them. I read about them. All, I'm in a parents group. I read about them all the time. Kids that were getting bullied, kids that didn't fit in. They're all doing better. All of them. And so wow. this narrative is all the kids are having mental health problems. And it's like, what about those fucking kids at East LA who, where just death is just fucking rampant, right? It's like one of every 400 have, have died. Like it's fucking crazy. They're having mental health problems because there's death everywhere and you're, and the society isn't doing anything. It's not because they're on fucking line during the day. And so that's the narrative that's out there because that was pushed by right wingers. And so the Democrats did not fight it. They just went, yeah, yeah, okay. What? Yeah. The Democrats didn't fight back? I mean, that's, <laughs> is that the first time? Um, it's really amazing. Uh, well, yeah, there's, God, that's, God, there's so many good, I didn't even think about any of those things, but that's, those are such great points, especially like in these hard hit communities like East LA, which is primarily black and Latino, that community, not only, one of the reasons they're being hit so hard is there's a lot of working class people in those communities that they don't have like they they don't have a nice job they can just zoom in from yeah. home they got to get on a bus and go to work and deliver stuff and flip burgers and, and you know whatever and and clean houses and you know all that all that you know frontline worker stuff that we're all we're all celebrating well they they had to go to they've been going to work this whole year you know, they've yeah. been having to wear masks and then, and then that's why they get hit the hardest. And then also too, you bring up great points. Why, why the, the mental health thing, a lot of those families, they're, they, they have multi-generational homes. So, you know yes. what, the grandpa and grandma died in their living room or whatever, you know, yeah. like, uh, or they went to the hospital and for, and they were there for three weeks and they never got to see them. And then they yeah. just got the call. Their dad, their dad's dead. Like, I mean, whatever. And I their mean, dad died because he had to go to one of these jobs. Yeah, my uh, we have a house cleaner, and uh, and when COVID hit, I I told her you're staying home. I'm giving you a raise. I'm paying you every week, and you're staying home until until we're safe. And I hope all your other uh, the other people you work for do the same thing. And so I would just give her money every week, and she stayed home. And this went on for months. And then in November, she got it because she had to go clean fucking people's houses, but they don't have health insurance. And she's not here legally. So her whole family got it. And and since they don't have health insurance and they can't afford to go to the doctor, they use this this, you know, old tea mix that has been going around in Mexico for years to clear you out. And, that, and that's what the, that's their health care. That's it. An old an old mix of tea that clears out your lungs. And she said it totally works. Like she's like, it's actually amazing. It does work. But one of them could have died because she lives with her fucking he, she lives with her father in law and her husband. And, you know, it's that's what they're that's what they're dealing with. And so if you're a kid, if you're if you're she has a, she has, a, I think, 11 year old kid. If you're an 11 year old kid, are you more stressed because you're online at school or because your mom is going to a job that could kill her? Right. Where's your mental health in that situation? Is it because you're learning math on a computer? No. It's because you're fucking worried your mom's going to fucking die. Right. And or and the fact that that narrative is out there is just, it's fucking mind boggling. It's like just letting, just letting the right wing run away with this fucking nonsense. And the reason, the other reason they do it is because a lot of Democrats want charter schools. They're in the charter school pockets. And this is, this, this can destroy public schools completely. 100% destroy them. That's the end game. Take them out. Make them all privatized, make them all charters. And so that's why the Democrats really aren't sticking up for it. I mean, some of them are in the union pockets and the other ones are in the charter pockets at a big fucking split down the middle. God. It's really fucked. So, uh, and then that's just like heartbreaking. And, and these are also such great points. And so, yeah, it's, it's the other thing too, is like they've done studies as well before COVID that only 30% of, of kids like this going to classroom, old learning yeah. Model that really was designed to just train you to be a shift worker in a factory. I mean, <laughs> like, that's literally what well, it was for. Right. I mean, I mean, they've, they've changed it around now. If you, if you looked at like how it all works, like I, I helped my kid with this math homework cause I was a math tutor, but the math is just garbage. Now there, it, it used to be, you would solve a problem and then you'd be like, Oh, I figured out how to solve that problem or I didn't, but there's an end game. You tried to solve the problem. Now they're like, can you write this equation in four different ways? And you're like, what the fuck is that? Who, 
what are you taking away from writing an equation for different ways? Oh, you know what you're taking away? When you're working on an iPhone and you're trying to figure out a bunch of different ways to do something, that's what you're taking away. They're making them business-minded little fucks. That's not analytical. It's just like, it's just figuring out different ways to do shit so you can go and work in your white-collar job in an office and figure out a bunch of different ways to do shit. It's fucking crazy. And that's Bill Gates. Bill Gates pushed all that shit into the schools. This is all his, his fucking bullshit. This is his plan. God. But he's been... It, it's just it's amazing to watch like it's all it's just fucked i mean the whole system is fucked and we're what such you, big supporters of public schools but we're also talking about pulling them out like it's just it's just really fucked yeah i i mean i i i'm a big supporter of public schools i went through public school i mean i i think and and that used to be like the backbone of 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 america was like you got free public school like that was such a new concept a lot of countries you had to pay for school we get free you know like k through 12 it's free and now it's just eviscerated and of course anytime they're like well, privatization will make it better no it'll only make it better for the one percent like shut up yeah. privatization yeah. has never helped working class people ever no yeah all the studies on charter schools that have come out they're they're bad they they have not helped anybody they're they're making things worse Every study is just like, no, it's not, it's not working. And so what are you seeing now as a parent, you have an 11 year old son who's been, you know, going to school at home the last year. How, what, what is, what is happening in the specific school district that you're dealing with and how, what are you seeing? So I'm in, I'm in Glendale United. Um, we're, we're sort of, I'm, I live up on the Hill uh, uh, and Glendale's down in the valley and, and there's a big split. There's a lot of um there's a big Armenian community and the Armenian community in Glendale is split. Like there's there's um sort of a new new immigrant wave that came in and and they they don't see head to head with the older, more long term Armenians here. And there's a bunch of Trumpers, particularly amongst the newer immigrants, tons of Trumpers. And so they don't believe in it, in the virus, and they hate the unions. And so we've got that dynamic. And I think that dynamic is playing out everywhere. That's what mm -hmm. I've been reading. It seems like to be pretty normal. So the school board is mostly um, mostly Armenian, and and they seem to listen more to the Armenians down in the valley, which is just, this is just shit. This is how it goes. Like, this is just fucking life. Like, you're you're part of a community, but there's... There, there's a, a voice that gets a, a bigger response, you know, and it, it's just, it's weird, but it is what it is. So a lot of them are, particularly at certain schools, are just super against COVID. They just don't fucking believe in it. And, um, and we've got two or three people on the school board that seems like they don't believe in it on the school board. And so, uh, and so there's this weird, it's a very weird dynamic here with, with all these different factions coming out against each other. But what happened was everything was going fine. Like everyone's online, going to school and teachers work harder in this, this way they're teaching. It's harder for them than it is to go to a classroom. You know, they have, they have 26, 30 kids on a screen as opposed to just having them in a room. It's much more difficult for them. Mm -hmm. They're working harder and these these parents are yelling at them. And then we had a school board meeting. I, I didn't know about it. Well, the anti the anti well, the Trump people and the the open school people just went fucking ape shit against the unions at this meeting. Just person after person saying how fucking lazy the unions are, how how shitty the teachers are. Like it was just it was like a fucking lynching for for 45 minutes. And nobody who, like me, I thought, I didn't think we were going back to school this year. And so that sort of turned the tide. And right around this time, also, Newsom was trying to get schools opened up again. For some reason, Democrats have just decided schools need to be open. And not five days a week. It's this hybrid plan. So you go two days a week or one day a week. And half the kids are still at home. And they're teaching in the classroom at the same time, which makes it super complicated because teachers don't know how to do that. I mean, could you imagine doing a stand up show for people in a room and then online also? It's just very, what is right. that? 
and they have to interact with them. And so the teachers all over the country have started to do this and they're saying, we don't, this can't be done. We don't know how to do this. So Newsom is pushing for that. There's a little bit of pushback um, from teachers unions and we're in LA County. So we have to follow the LA County uh, health rules, the health department rules, but not, we're not in LA USD. So we don't have to follow the big union and all that stuff that's going on there. So after this meeting with all this screaming, we get an email from the super superintendent and it says, we're coming back to school on March 23rd, the day after spring break. Very smart. Very smart. Because you know when people take holidays and stuff, there's no increase in COVID spread. <laughs> like that's never happened. No, there's no pattern of it the last 12 months. We're, we're good. <laughs> and the email says, we're opening up. You have to choose right within within four days whether your kid comes back to school. And if you say no, your kid cannot come back to school for the rest of the year, no matter what happens. So even if everyone's like magically everyone's vaccinated, all the teachers are vaccinated. Like if some miracle happens, we can't. So we have to make a choice. And on top of that, there's no explanation of how they're going to set up the schools. There's no safety explanation. There's nothing. It's just make a fucking decision and fuck off. And so everybody flips out. Everybody completely fucking flips out. And they're like, what in the fuck is this? People are like, how do I even respond to this? I don't even know. You're not giving me any information. And the school is just like, we're opening up. That's it. We're fucking opening. And everyone has no idea what's happening. Newsom's trying to push his bill through through the legislature and the legislature is like, no. But then there's all these Democrats and right wingers who are like, we need open schools now. The kids have mental health problems. And it just it just goes on like this for like a couple of weeks. Everyone's yelling at each other. The community now is torn apart. People want to fucking kill each other because now it's gone from just being like, OK, we're in this place. We're all trying to work through it to like now everyone's opposed to each other. Now we have all these people want to go back and just put their kids in school and people who don't. And I've talked to principals, a couple of principals, and they're like, you know what? The kids, because we have these things called pods, which is basically daycare. Mm -hmm. And that's needed for people who have to go to work. You have to put your right. kid in a fucking pod if you have to work. And so the pods, they say, are working fine. But then I, and, and the parents who are screaming, we need to get our kids in school. I talked to the principals and they're like, that kid has never done well. That kid is a problem because of the parents, not because they're not at school. It's because that kid's always been a problem. So the parents are the loudest about getting their kids in. If you go talk to principals and teachers, they're like, yeah, that kid's, that kid's, it's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> so it's really what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a family dynamic and all these people don't want to be around their kids or can't handle it or whatever the fucking situation is. So then they start putting out all this <laughs> propaganda and the propaganda is, you know, you, you, you see it, you'll see it in the media. It's, it especially came out this week with some distancing stuff, but they start saying it's completely safe. All the studies say it's safe. that kids can go back to school if they wear masks and the rooms are ventilated and, uh, and that's it. Just wear masks and the rooms are ventilated. And so a bunch of us are talking we're like this isn't, this doesn't make any sense. And then you read all the studies that they're alluding to. Well, they're not testing any asymptomatic kids at all. All of these tests where they say it doesn't spread in school. A kid came in with COVID. They found him and they, and then they quarantined everybody and no one else had it. Well, how do you know they didn't have it? Kids have a huge asymptomatic rate. They they're asymptomatic and they spread it. But if they don't have symptoms and you don't test them, then how do you know it's not? How do you say it's not spreading? Right. It's a total catch 22. And so they just keep saying it's not spreading in schools. And we go, who's testing the asymptomatic kids? And then no one responds. I've, I've asked that question to 50 scientists who have said open schools. I've asked it to all of the I've asked it to a doctor who came on and gave us a lecture. I, I just said, how do you and just ignore it. They all ignore it. They, they act like you didn't ask the question. They're just, I have not gotten that answer once. I always say, if the kids are asymptomatic when they get it, and you're not testing asymptomatic kids, how do you know it's not spreading? And they ignore me. 
God. And they did one study. It came uh, Cobb County, Georgia, and it, it was at the end of February. And they tested all the asymptomatic kids. And it spread. And they found out in, in those kids' homes, 26% of the people who live with the kids had COVID. Because it, they don't they don't show symptoms and then they go into your house. And so what but what happens is, is then they take that data if they're not testing asymptomatic kids, they take that data and they go, well, there was spread in the community. But it can't be traced to the school. So if there's if a house if a house has covid and a kid goes to a school and they didn't test the kid who's asymptomatic, then they just go, well, that had nothing to do with the school. What? And they do one fucking study and they find out that a bunch of people got it. Yes, it the whole school thing is fucking bullshit. They're not testing asymptomatic kids. They cannot say that it is not spreading. It's fucking insane. Most kids are asymptomatic. So so <laughs> so so we have we have another board meeting in which everyone's now mad because we had to choose whether or not to send our kid to school, right? I said, no, we're not sending our kid to school. Um, they say, they said 60% of people did, but then they're like only 75 people respond, 75% of people responded. So then you're like 60% of 75. So it's more like 40% or so 45% who said, yes, they're sending their kid to school. Right. So it sounds like 45% of people are sending their kids to school. We have another board meeting and this time all of us show up and yell at them and they don't give a shit. There's a guy on the board. He's the guy that I had to yell at once to put a mask on his face. I yelled at him during a zoom meeting in early on in like May or something. I screamed at him, put your fucking mask on. <laughs> like he just starts talking. He, he says, my father, went went and served and he fought in a war and, and my father fought in a war for two years and if my father can do that then teachers need to go back to school and and and, and what <laughs> right so now we're comparing teachers to fucking people in vietnam like what in the fuck what kind of fucking country is this like how does that motherfucker get to sit on a goddamn school board and say this shit. And then we find out that guy is telling all the parents to attack the union. On the school board, when parents contact him, he says, well, you need to go after the union because they're the ones stopping us from getting back into school the way we want. Because the union's fighting it. The union's like, this can't happen. We need to be vaccinated. We need to have all this stuff in place. There needs to be testing. And they're just like, no, we're going to do what we want. And they can do that because then Newsom passed his bill and in it, it says you can ignore the unions. Completely ignore the unions if you want. You can go back to school. Fuck the unions. But the problem is, is that you can't ignore unions because they can just go on strike. Which they've done and in some though, certain cities. They've, there's some yeah. cities and teachers are like, no, we're not doing this. And, and, and Chicago and, and mm -hmm. I don't know how LAUSD has voted. But yeah, no, there's places that are like, no, we're not going back to fucking school. And they shouldn't. And now everyone's getting mad at the at the teachers unions because they're like, well, that's the reason our kid's not in school. And there's shit like, so I, I've been doing deep dives into this. And there's a whole new thing, MERV 13 filters, which is like the most powerful filter you can have in uh, in your air conditioning system or whatever it is. And it circulates the air the fastest. And that's what you really need in a classroom. It's just air circulating and switched five times per hour so that it's just constantly moving. And I start looking into, I go, what is this MERV thing? And I research it. And you know why that, you know why that's happening? A fucking union. The San Francisco Structural Engineers Union, who works in schools, was listening to the debate. And they said, look, guys, I've been working with air conditioning and HVAC units for years. MERV 13 is the solution you want. That's the filter you want. And then it got through and it filtered to, this, to the school district and the school district told people who work in the government and then it was part of the official rules because of a fucking union. Because the unions are the things that are keeping people safe. They're the only ones fighting for safety. The school board is not doing it. They're just like, what's the least we can fucking do? It's the only people fighting for safety and not just for teachers. 
for staff, for students. It's only unions. The school boards don't give a shit. And the latest thing, which came out a couple of days ago, was all of a sudden, oh, there's a new study. And it says that you can, you don't have to be six feet apart in schools. Kids can be three feet apart. And you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Fauci has recently said we should, we should put on two masks. We should be wearing two masks. And now you're telling me they should be three feet apart. Do you see how that doesn't really fit together? And then you do a deep dive on that. Well, it's not a study. It was just a policy somewhere, and a policy in which they didn't test asymptomatic kids. And now if you go on the news and you Google it, it's like, hey, we can do it. Because you know why? Because they don't want to spend money on schools, which they need to spend billions of dollars. They did before the pandemic. It was already shit. They don't want to fucking spend money. So they're fitting the science around the actual physical locations. That's all they're doing. They're getting ready for the fall to push all these kids back into schools by saying it's just fine to do three feet and there's no scientific basis for it whatsoever. But they're all talking about it. If you go online and Google it, everyone's like, yeah, we can do three feet now. If I was fucking governor, I, you know you know how all these businesses have got out of fucking business? You know, all these big box stores? Well, they're just sitting vacant. Take them over and turn them into fucking schools on a temporary basis. There's a shitload of empty buildings. Just put kids in them and fucking hire new teachers to stand. And so they're all super. I mean, if you want to put them back in school, that's what you fucking do. But they're not. They're doing the office. They're they're gearing the science around around the buildings because they don't want to tax the rich. And put all that money into making our kids safe. They're just going to send them to fucking die. And I'm sorry, but Germany, they're closing down schools left and fucking right because kids are coming down with it because of the new variants. Kindergartens are being overrun. Austria, Italy, you just go read about it in, in Europe. It, they're just getting fucking slaughtered. It is, it is now passing the most amongst children all over Europe. Oh, That's yeah. who's now spreading the virus. And that may have been who was always spreading the virus. We don't know because we weren't testing them. Right, right. Because they, they so many kids had it and were asymptomatic and had no idea. Um, I mean, yeah, isn't, isn't, I heard like, isn't Italy gone back to shutdown and a couple other European countries have gone back to full shutdowns or close to it because Italy, of the uh, yeah, Germany's going back into lockdown. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's all, all over Europe. It's uh, France, I think, is going back into lockdown. And every time they start testing kids, it's like, oh God, they all have it. So, you know, we're, it's really like you said, it's the two party thing. And because Trump was so bad, everyone's just like, well, Biden's in there and he's following the science. No, he isn't. No one's following the science with the right. kids. No one is following the science. They just want to get kids back in school because they want to do the testing and they want to get people off unemployment and back working. But the problem is it's this hybrid thing. So it's actually making it more complicated for parents. Like if you're a parent and you have your kid at home and they're going to school online, is that better or worse than having to take your kid to school two days a week and then only for four hours as opposed to six? So now you got to go figure out a way to pick them up. Like, how is that? How is your work schedule in that case? Oh, boss, I got to pick up my kid. It's noon. Like, what the <laughs> on Tuesday? Like, it's just this. What the fuck are we doing? Yeah, exactly. Like, what? And, and honestly, I mean, it became pretty clear to all of us. Uh, you know, a couple months into it last year, you know, when there's this like the CARES Act and you're like, oh, this country, nobody cares. This, this is a banana republic. Nobody, th th the government doesn't give a shit about us. Trump really didn't give a shit. And now we've got the pleasant old man that doesn't kind of give a shit, but it's not as obvious. Like, it's just, it's yeah. just uh, this country. COVID-19 has exposed every oh. problem. That yeah, America every had single before. problem, everyone, every single problem, and it even it even like it, it has accentuated the the animosity between the two Armenian groups here in Glendale. Mm -hmm. Like you see them going at like it's all it's all accentuated and everything is just being highlighted. Like none of this, none of it works. I mean, nothing in America works. Everybody knows we need to fix the schools before COVID came. Right. The class sizes are too big. They're already like 30, 36 kids in a lot of places. The, the schools are just dilapidated, particularly, you know, in in urban environments where we've just 
you know, fuck it. There's mold and there's you right. know, nothing works and, and nobody gives a shit because up in the up in the suburbs, like my suburb, you know, we have a PTA and everyone just throws in tons of money and, and things that you need get taken care of. Well, you know, this, this battle isn't just for, you know, down in Glendale, there's school, there's schools that are far worse off and there's parents that are far worse off. It's it's, it's they have a worse economic situation down there than we do up here in the hills. And so when I'm fighting this, I'm also thinking like, well, there's people down there that can't deal with this. Like you have to make it safe for them mm -hmm. to send it because they have they're going to have to send their kids to school. Why aren't we doing testing? You remember when everyone was like the way to stop covid is three things, testing, tracing and quarantining. Like that was always a thing from the start. Well, now. It's just quarantining and tracing for schools. And you're like, what the fuck does that even mean? Just do the rapid tests. The rapid test costs five bucks each. You give it, give a kid a test in the morning. And then if it comes back positive, then you send them off to go get the official test mm -hmm. that costs a lot more and is a thing. And then maybe you can catch some kids. I mean, rapid tests aren't hundred percent. They're like 60, but it's still a safety net. Like you, you catch some kids that might have it. And they and they're just like, yeah, we don't need to do testing. What the fuck are you talking about? You don't need to do testing because it costs money. That's why you don't want to fucking do it. Like we did this with the grocery workers and the fucking poultry plant workers. We just sent them off to die. And it's like, well, now we're going to do that with their children because they don't die as much. Well, some are going to fucking die and their teachers are going to fucking die. What are we doing? I, I yeah, I just it, it it's it's mystify i mean in this country one of the things that got exposed in this country was how propagandized everybody is and liberals like to go yeah i know fox and news and QAnon. ah not just them not just them i mean the liberals are are you know they've been listening yeah. they think russia hacked the last election so they they're you know and they think uh you know, Joe Biden and Kamala are fantastic people. They don't want to listen to the reality of them. They think Obama was great. They don't want to hear any of these realities. So nobody, I mean, you talk, when you talk to, and I know you do this because you, you've, you've done shows internationally. You have friends and fans in other countries. When you talk to people from other countries, they go, what is wrong with America? <laughs> like literally what is wrong? Yeah. And no, where they literally talk to us like we're crazy people. They're just like, you guys I'm are like, I, I wish everybody could talk to someone in another country because they literally are just like, what is what is going on? Like it is concern, it is fear. They're just like, what is happening with you guys? Yeah, you and guys remember, they've been watching, they've been watching us kill kids in schools for years. We yeah. don't give a shit. So of course we're gonna send them back with COVID around because we sent them back with school shootings. We don't care about children's lives. How many but, kids died at fucking Stony? Uh, uh, like thirty children, little fucking children. Nobody gives a shit. Gun down. We just don't care. No, we don't care. Okay, obviously, we don't care. We don't care about the eighty-five thousand kids we've killed in Yemen. So why we don't care about our yeah. own kids? We don't care about Yemen. Yeah. I mean, look, and this is like Madeleine Albright back in nineteen ninety-four, going, yeah, you know, five hundred thousand Iraqi kids dying because of sanctions. It's unfortunate, but it's necessary. She said that in a sixty minutes interview. And she's revered, you know, Ilian Omar says she's one of her heroes. That, that, that's, that's our big progressive, the, 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 the squad loves somebody that sanctioned 500 kids to death. I mean, America is so out of touch. We are so insane. We don't like, and I knew this was going to happen when I posted stuff uh, on, on social media, but mainly I knew it. And this would happen on Facebook because there's just more dumb Gen Xers. Unfortunately, our generation is pretty fucking stupid. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's sad. I get the blame. Yeah, I can't. I can't sit here and blame the boomers when I look at what Gen X has just become. This just like they watched West Wing and thought yeah. you know Obama was great or whatever. And 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 I was like, how come Biden? You know, is, is this was like a week or so ago? I go, he's bombing Syria, but he can't give us our fourteen hundred dollar checks. And it's always some like, as Lee Camp calls him, some double digit IQ comic, some road act that was hacky that nobody ever respected to begin with. Who's like, oh Graham. Yeah. Um, Biden, uh, had to respond or something. I fixed it for you. And I'm like, so you're defending war. You sound like a Republican. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, they do. They, they, they sound exactly like Republicans. I mean, the Republicans we grew up with, they, they sound no different than them at all. Right. Because that's what the democratic party is. I mean, the democratic party today is the Republican party of 30 years ago.
Yeah, and, 100%. And we know this, you know, like I remember talking to, I remember, I mean, this is probably five, six years ago, seven years ago, something like that. Will Anderson, when he was living in LA and I, he lived around the corner for me and I went over to do his podcast. I think you and I were both on at one time and he said, he said, you know, the right wing party of Australia is to the left of the Democrats in this party, in this country. Yeah. He goes, do you know that? Right. And that's most countries are like that. They're, their right wing crazy conservative party is like to the, I mean, literally like as nuts as Boris Johnson and that party is, they look like a goddamn hippie commune compared to the Democrats here. Like yeah. it's, and, and, and I mean, the, the, we're, 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 and we're politically homeless. Us like lefty yes. socialist we, progressive. Yes. We're, we're, we have no nothing. There's no party for us. There's no, no one for us. No, no one is, no one, you know, no one is, has any ideology in the democratic party. Like that, that's why their, their COVID response has been so shitty. And Newsom is a great example. And you know, Cuomo and they're not looking at it from an ideological perspective. They're looking at it from a, how do we keep money rolling perspective? It's just, it's just capitalism. And so they're just shifting with the fucking wind and like, Oh, that guy, th those people are mad at me for this. I'll do this now. Yeah. But it's like, it's why I bring up like, why don't we taking over big box, you know, stores and shit like that. That's a socialist solution. Let's just take shit over and put people into, into safe environments. If you want to put them back in school, like that's, that's how you would do it. Let's just let's just take some shit over and away from big businesses and and straighten this shit out. But they're not looking at it from that perspective. They're trying to squeeze an answer into this using capitalism. And capitalism has no answer for this. It no. has no answer at all. Uh, all capitalism. I mean, honestly, like COVID has 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 really uncovered how awful capitalism is. I mean, yeah. really, like. And, and when you have a capitalist society like America, you don't have a society. You have no. the United Corporations of America. You, there's no, there's no, you know, working for each other. There's no helping each other out. I mean, America went about two months of, yay, we're in it. We got to protect our vulnerable. And then by month three, it was like, yeah, you know, Nana had a good run, you know, good luck. Uh, <laughs> it was just like, yeah, we started killing old people immediately. We're just like, well, they can't, this is just. Fuck that. Yeah. But that's how, how I mean, we that's... deal with them. Do you do you know why? Do you know why? No, this is another thing. The reason that um the retirement homes were so bad is because of capitalism. So there's only a few like tenured nurses on a staff, and you have to work your way up to be a tenured nurse. So it takes years to get there. And then once you do, then you have a job and you only work that job, and it is one home. Until you get there, you work at like four different nursing homes part time to get the hours and until a space becomes available until you can become like a tenured nurse or care person or whatever it is in a, in a retirement home. So the way our system is set up to squeeze the most money out of workers and not pay them benefits and everything they need created a massive spread. Because those workers are going from one home to another, to another, to another. And they're just spreading it. So instead of just going, hey, here's the situation with old people in these homes. Let's make these workers only work at one place. We just let it continue. And the old people died and died and died and died. But Cuomo handled it well in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Mass murderer. He is a mass murderer. mass murderer. I mean, there's not only what what happened that were that all this stuff that's coming out now about what he did in the you know in the the senior centers uh, is, and of course the the corporate media is so biased for the Democrats. I mean, it's yeah. Fox is it's obviously it's it's just a bias for the Republicans. But the other, I mean, CNN and MSNBC, it's unbelievable. And, and when people, the lib, they're not, it's not liberal. I mean, it's just awful corporate Democrat media, but they won't even talk about that. What was it? 10 or 20,000 hospital beds. He's, he shut down over the period of 10 years leading up to this, mm -hmm. all of his fights yeah. with the nurses union. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, our mutual friend, 
completely ignored. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. And now like, yeah. oh, he's a sex creep. Oh, they're, they're, and this is another me too. Me too. Believe all women, unless they accuse Democrats, then maybe not so we much. Fucking, we fucking knew it before he was elected last time. Like all the lefties were screaming about it. It's not like Lindsay just came out with this fucking story recently. She's been saying it for years and we've been like, yeah, they don't give a shit. No, they don't fucking care. Well, look at Tara Reid. They don't care. Yeah, they don't care. She, she was sexually assaulted by Biden and nobody cares. And like so-called like liberal feminist women who were all screaming me too, literally don't care about Tara Reid. They don't care at all. It, it's offensive. All. Um, I mean, you really have to, you really have to like, look, and you say we're not a society. We haven't been in society for years. And that was really Reagan's great project, but it's like, you know, now we're at the point where we've gone through all these different workers and now we're just like, well, let's sacrifice the teachers and the kids. And, and, and the really big part of it for me is besides that they're not doing what it takes, you know, they're not they're Like we have schools, we have classrooms where the windows don't open and they're not going to open. They're not going to unseal them. They're just going to they. When we asked in that meeting, that dickhead school board guy who keeps his mask down, he was like, well, I mean, people could break in. And I've always heard that that they seal shut windows because it's racism and they're scared of, of, you know, brown people breaking in. But I just heard it and I was just like, what the fuck are you talking about? That's why you keep a window sealed shut. Because someone might break in. And so that's <laughs> ventilation. That'll keep kids alive. That'll keep teachers alive. But we have to deal with the fact that 25% of Americans or more don't believe in COVID. And so I'm not sending my kid to school. We're not sending a teacher to school into an environment where everyone's trying to be safe. We're sending them into an environment with suicide bombers. Right. Let me, let me read you. This is from a reopen uh, group in our Cynthia Spears. My kids have been in pods the entire school year. The benefit of them being on campus and being with other kids outweigh the mask wearing. As soon as we get off campus, they take off those masks and don't put them on for the rest of the day. It's worth it for the socialization aspect. Uh, here's another one. <laughs> and so there's just tons of these. My kids and I don't wear masks. We never have, and they don't want to either. I have four kids from 23 months to 17 years old. They see their friends all the time. We have never quarantined. So that's who I'm pitting my kid into school with. It's not, it's not like it's a bunch of people who are trying to stay safe. It's... It's what 25% of them who don't think it's real. So how do you, how do you mitigate that? Like, how do you, so when they say everybody in the class, they say it's all going to be safe because the kids all follow the rules and you're like, okay, well, here's kids that don't give a shit. So what are you fucking talking about? And that, and that's what we're dealing with. Like he, it's just like, no one gives a shit. Nobody gives a shit. And then they start fucking and lying about the goddamn science. It's three feet, six feet shit. All of a sudden, the asymptomatic kids don't matter. It, it's just like this is what it came to us, right? It finally came to my life personally. It happened to the grocery store workers. It happened to all the guys working in the meat plants. It happened to all the people uh, in restaurants. And it happened to all the, the fucking immigrants who are picking out in the fields because they all go and live in these terrible situations. It just went through every single sector of our society. And this is it. This is the last one that they haven't. The only people who are untouched are rich people who can afford to live in a box right. and, and have their food delivered. Everybody else is being sacrificed. It's not a society. It's worse than not a society. And there's so There's no empathy whatsoever. Nobody cares about each other. Oh, no, none. America's selfishness. I mean, we've been bred to be selfish. And this is looked at the ruling class has done a fantastic job of propagandizing all of us through the media and and not just not just the news, but like you look at look at your Hulu or Netflix or the recommended. Yeah. It's all kill, revenge, selfish. <laughs> The comedies, we know this, are all just like, every comedy is like, I'm a stupid, selfish fuck up. You know, like that's every comedy, every com comedian special on Netflix. I can't watch them anymore. 
because it's just like some of them are funny comics. They're good joke writers, but I'm like, I don't need another like, oh, I'm a dipshit. Like that's because <laughs> you, you can't do any comedy calling out the ruling class. You can't. You can't. They, won't, they won't give you a special. They won't give no. you a series. It's just like, and if it, you know, it's like, if you're a guy, you got to be just some beer guzzling Yahoo and a girl like, I like sleeping around or whatever. That's, that's <laughs> it. That's all you're allowed to say. And maybe a couple of the Trump jokes, you know, back a couple, you know, before you left, it was like, you could do Trump jokes, but you couldn't be like, oh, Joe Biden is a warmonger. you like, you couldn't say that. No. Like the 94 crime bill, Kamala Harris put a hundred thousand black people behind bars. <laughs> you can, that's not going to go in your Netflix special. And, no. and so because of that we have insanity we have yeah insane people who then don't think COVID is real and i understand like having some skepticism about this vaccine and skepticism about the big pharmaceutical company. i totally get that ask those questions but just the like nope across the board i'm like all right man like uh, you know <laughs> i mean i had some i was a little skeptical six, seven months ago. I'm like, are they rushing this thing? Is it, is it too? And yeah, I, I think we all were. Yeah, of course. As well, we should about it. And you, and you understand why it, it works so fast and you go, Oh, that all makes sense. Like it's something they've been working on for 10 years and yeah, because it's connected to stars. Smart. Yeah. It's yeah. so they've been researching this for a long time. And then this woman in create the thing that sold me is when I found out the woman that created the RNA inhibitor thing a couple years ago, they've, they created it. And the pharmaceutical companies went, her version's too cheap. It won't make us a big as much of a profit. So let's do the old version. That's why I was like, well, now I want the RNA one because that one, <laughs> that's, that's the one I want because uh, that's that's the a scientist did research and came up with something great, and the pharmaceutical companies went, uh, it's not good for the the bottom line. So um, yeah, and you do the research and you find out about it, and it, you're like, they're gonna make you you know have have vaccine passports. Yeah, I've had one. I I had to. There's yeah. a there's, there's these in L.A. I went to this guy several times over uh he, he's literally called the travel doctor and you go there and you say i'm going to this part of the world he goes all right well you need le yellow fever and yeah. you need this and this and they get this thing and they give you stickers and you have to show it in your passport when you came when you came back yeah. to and like here's malaria pills i did do all that shit i went to all these yeah, crazy a big places. fucking deal yeah it's it's crazy it's crazy to me that that's People are flipping out about it. And it's funny. I, I went online because, you know, I've been reading about this. I've been reading scientists and what they're talking about. And sometimes sometimes it's like well, everyone should be tested. All the kids should be tested. And the fucking parents that came out. My kid's not getting tested for COVID. Just hundreds fucking yelling at her. And I'm just like. It's a fucking test, man. Like if you go if you go fuck a. a uh, some girl in the back of an alley or whatever maybe get tested for vd like i don't know like it's a test dude it's a fucking test trust me these people have had a lot of vd tests like just go it's just a fucking test you you, you hang out with someone who's got tuberculosis maybe get a fucking test yeah it's like a test it's, and there it's it's against freedom now to get it it's just this society well, is it's gone out of control in so many sense first of all like and if you don't want to get it fine don't get it I, I don't get the flu vaccine every year because I trust my immune system. And yet I've never stood outside of a CVS going, you're getting a vaccine, test you, mind, you're crazy. I just say, that's your choice. That's my choice, whatever. Maybe you're a high risk group. My, my body is always in pretty good shape. I can fight off a flu vaccine. I don't know. Maybe when I'm 75, that'll change. But like the craziness. And then people don't realize in the third world, all these poor countries are begging for yeah. this vaccine. They're begging. Oh my God. Like, yeah, I mean, Bill Gates is the devil. Oh, because that Oxford one was what they were going to make it public. They were going to be like, whoever can make it can make it. And he fucking talked him into keeping it private. Do you have any people that motherfucker killed by doing that? Yes. So when people are like, I don't want the Bill Gates vaccine because he's going to murder us. No, this is how he's murdering people. He's not giving it to the third world. And there's parts of this of this world where they still have polio. There's a vaccine for yeah. that. It's been around for 70 fucking years and we can't. Because it's not profitable. This country can't afford it. So we're not going to give it to them. So it's it's such yeah. a thing of, of, of American privilege to say, I don't want this vaccine. They're begging for it in Mexico. They're yeah. begging. Like, and Biden has. Right. To it, also, it also, like, I get, I, I get that people make money, but it's going to harm us because variants are going to come. Yes. I mean, P1 is a great example. The one in Brazil. It apparently 
reinfects people like 35, 40 percent of people that have already had it can get reinfected. And so that's now here in the United States. And it's going to happen again and again and again unless we vaccinate everybody in the fucking world. But again, it's just it's just racism and greed. It's those are a bunch of fucking brown people. I don't care. And then on top of that, my company's making money. But just the fact that we live in a world where everybody's not like, no, this need these vaccines no, need to go to everybody now. Everybody needs to get them. And it's not even that. That's a great example of like, where the fuck is MSNBC on this? Where where's CNN on this? Just nothing, nothing. It's super dangerous to all of us, not just the people in those countries, even for self-preservation. Use your fucking brain. Right. We should be we should be sending hundreds of millions of vaccines to Mexico just because we share a border with them. Yeah. Like we should be vaccinating and, you know, we should be, should be doing that. And the people coming to the yeah. border and, and uh, th that should all be happening. My name is Graham Elwood and you're watching The Political Vigilante. I'm here with the host of the Dollop podcast, Dave Anthony. Uh, we've just been talking about um, <laughs> the insanity of forcing kids open into school districts and the collapse of capitalism, um, the collapse of America at the behest of toxic capitalism. Um, I, I should I should say that we're fortunate because other school districts in like Florida and, you know, whatever else, Missouri, like they're just opening and there's no masks. They, they don't. It's just fucked. It's insane. It's it's insane. I don't want to live in a crazy country anymore. I don't want to live in an insane. <laughs> um, I just I just can't do it. Like I grew up in an alcoholic home. I'm not going to live in a country that's worse. I'm just not like a, cra a bigger, crazier, more gun version uh, I'm not going to do it. Um, but, um, I, I wanted to, I wanted to talk to you about this new stimulus plan, uh, oh that oh. they're, they're all, they're all touting it. And, and everybody on, this is what, this is what is so insane and stupid about our corporate media. So obviously the neoliberal side, MSNBC is seen is talking about how oh, this is great. And it's, and it's rescuing poor people. And then Fox's criticism of it isn't even a good crit like, like cr their criticism is stupid yeah. is within the, is in yeah. the parameter of this two stupid, these two stupid parties. Like, yes. and so there's all this shit in this thing. Like I had Justin Jackson on the show yesterday and he's, he was like, first of all, he's great. He's great. He's fantastic. I mean, the guy is 25, 26. He's an NFL player and he's like sharp gets it. And, um, it's, un it's, it's fantastic to listen to the guy, but he pointed out, we, and we were talking about this yesterday. No $15 an hour minimum wage, which we could have. Mm -hmm. Student debt forgiveness could be in there. Joe Biden doesn't even need a bill for that. He could just do that through executive order. Yeah. I don't know most people get understand this. 85% of all student loans are federal. So that yeah. he doesn't need Congress for that. He can literally through executive order, gone. Take that off right. and infuse trillions of dollars into the economy by a bunch of people yeah. not having to make monthly payments anymore. He could give us all Medicare for all through executive order because we are in the middle of a national emergency. That's right. Um, there's that city, I forget, in Montana or wherever that that had a uh, a, a crisis and they gave everybody free health care because there was like a water spill or something. There was contaminated water. Um, and he could do that on a national level. And in this thing, they're saying, oh, it's 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 lifting people out of poverty. Two two my two questions on this. Well, first of all, it isn't, and we'll get into that in the sec, but uh, it's not. So that's you're lying. But let's say it was. Oh, so you could have done this this whole time. <laughs> well, so now we get now we get everyone. So we just been not we could have fixed poverty a long time ago, but just now we did it. Like, yeah, yeah, and that's that's really the grotesque part of it is that everyone's everyone who's getting money now is going to be like, why haven't I gotten money all the time? Why have I been living like this? What exactly yeah. is it that I have to live in squalor and just check to check and moment to moment when you could have helped me out a long time ago? Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, is like, if I'm, if I'm, I'm, you know, I have a, a house and I'm trying to get by and I'm a renter and, you know, I got a couple of kids and I really need a better job and, and I don't need to pay as much for healthcare. I, I, do not need to pay what I'm paying. And then I have my school loans, right? Mm -hmm. If you give me $5,000, that doesn't take care of any of those problems. No. 
I still have a job that doesn't pay enough. I still am paying too much for medical care that doesn't work that well. And I still have my student loans. Systematically, you've done nothing to change my life at all. You've just given me a check and that's not a program. You can't say that Biden eliminated poverty. He didn't eliminate anything. It's a temporary bandaid for poverty. He just threw money at people for a few months and then that's it. And then everything goes back to normal. And does, do people remember FDR? They're nope. acting like Biden's done this amazing thing that no one's done before. Well, that's not what FDR did. He, he put people back to fucking work and he created programs to help people. For the he long created term jobs, he create. I mean, he put. I mean, he literally created whole new industries and put yes. people at work, like building the the WPA theaters. Like part of that, yeah. like, like like I did that FNX show that I directed was in one of those. It's beautiful. There's ornate tapestries. So he put artists and architects and construction people, and then for a thing that's for the arts, that's good for society. There's no one got, yeah. there's no new jobs. Biden didn't create any new jobs. He's not putting it. There's no jobs program. B Obama didn't have one. Trump didn't have one. No one has a new jobs program. Where the fuck is it? It's, it's, it's maddening to me because it's like that. This is the biggest tax break parents have gotten. Okay. But it's, it's only one year. They're not, I mean, and yeah. even any, so are they extending it? Doubtful. Even if they do, what about me? I don't have kids. I don't have, I don't right, get this. I know. Where's my break? Yeah, what people, do I get? people with kids are getting a ton of money. And I'm just thinking like, well, it's it, everybody. Most of the young people are who are really fucked right now. And what are they, they don't have? Most of them don't have kids. Like what, what are you doing? It's such a, it was such a weird thing to put out there that like, we're just going to throw all this money at people with kids. And it's like, there's a lot of other fucking people out there that are having a hard time. Why is it just people with kids? And, if you want to help families so much, you want to get people out of poverty, $15 an hour. They couldn't even do that. You know how many people's lives you would drastically change in states where the minimum wage is $7 an hour and the cost yeah. of living isn't as bad as it is in California or New York or whatever that, that would, you know, that would drastically change somebody's life, you know? Yeah, and also it's shit. It should be 25. It's yeah. fucking fucking is bullshit. I mean, that's just like the worst compromise of all time. It should be 25. It's just fucking nonsense. So, yeah, they, they did absolutely nothing. And it's again, it's kicking the can down the road. That's all that's been happening this entire pandemic. They're kicking the can down the road. They're not addressing the rent situation, which is fucking massive. People are going to get these checks and they're going to do what with it? I mean, they put out this. They the Democrats put out this little video of what people are going to do. And almost every person was like, I'm going to pay off some of my debt. It's like, what the fuck is that? I'm going to pay off some of my fucking debt. You know how stupid that sounds. That's not that's changing your, anybody's lives. And, no, and, and the unemployment ends in September, according to this bill. And look, everything, if everything kind of opens up the way they're saying with if these vaccine rollout, like we said, the one thing Biden has done correctly is getting more vaccines. So if this, if, if everyone's and the economy's open and blah, 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 that's the plan is then, Hey, you're, we're done with stimulus and you got to just like figure it out. And then what? And there's no, there's no rent forgiveness. And, and so there's, so right. you've got renters and then you've got people who just had to put a forbearance on their home. Like they couldn't afford their mortgage or even just everyone's like all mad at all landlords. And I got to say, you can't be all, some landlords are, are small business owners. Like they're just like, they just own a rental property and now they can't afford the mortgage because their, their, their renters aren't working. And so they've lost all these revenue streams and all they've done is gone to their banks and given a forbearance, which just, they don't have to pay. They don't have to pay the, the make the payments. But the but it interest, it all adds up. And okay, yeah, they're going to restructure yeah. the loan. But I'm sorry, if your mortgage payment was, let's say, $1,200 and they just restructure the loan and you don't have to make back payments, the new payment's going to be $1,500, $1,600, something like that when they recalculate it. So it's still not going to help you. You're still going to be making bigger payments. Yeah. That's the best case scenario, not to mention your property tax has gone up. They might just go, here's a long-term uh, interest pay. Like- they they've kicked this can down the road. Right now, there's there's a there's a sh there's a housing shortage of people haven't put their houses up for sale because of COVID because they don't want to yeah. have people in their home whatever. Well, when when the when the stimulus runs out and when there's a glut of homes and people start selling stuff like that and prices come down or whatever or the forbearance comes due or because there isn't rent forgiveness, then people are just going to go. Oh, I got to sell my home so so I don't foreclose and then there's going to be a glut and then what? 
Yeah. Like there's going to be a housing collapse. The commercial real estate. I mean, think of all these big offices where everybody's been working from home for 12 months. There's all these big yeah. companies are like, why are we paying this exorbitant rent? You know, maybe we'll have people come back. We'll get a smaller office space. People will come back one or two days a week. Some people like, we're, yeah. I mean, but, but like the big office is going to be buzzing again. No way. No. Like, no, it's, it's done. Like no, there's no big offices anymore. You don't need them. No. And so that you're right. That's a huge part of the economy. Like commercial real estate is fucking massive. And yeah, I mean, the, the due dates coming on all the shit and I don't know what they did for it. Like, all these, I just remember the next day I went online and I was like, well, they didn't pass all this stuff that's really needed. And then you just see all these people tweeting Defending. and yelling about how great it is and how it's going to change the world. And it's just like, yeah, no, it's, you guys are suckers They're It's propaganda They're Like you said, they're all, they're all just loving Biden and whatever Biden does can be no wrong. And it's like, no, they didn't get the minimum fucking wage, which was already shit. $15 is fucking shit. He's not going to do anything about student loans, which is there have been studies that have shown that it would be better for the economy by far to wipe out the student loans. It helps the economy. It helps everything. Mm -hmm. and, and just the fact that they're, they're just in the pockets, man, they just don't give a shit about anybody. It's, it's just it's like that Cobra shit that they did. Oh God! Instead of giving us Medicare for all, they're like everybody can have Cobra. And you're like Cobra's the worst thing ever. Ever, it's the worst. Oh great! You get to double or triple your insurance costs. <laughs> awesome! Uh, like, and I got to make copays, and there's going to be all the shit that's not covered. I remember the first time I I got Cobra when like I had health insurance through the Actors Union and it expired, and they're like, "But you can do Cobra," and it was like five hundred bucks a month. I'm like, yeah. Now, now, if uh, the last I checked, it, if my if my insurance runs out for my family of three, it's like twenty three hundred a month. <laughs> That's doable in a pandemic. <laughs> totally doable. I mean, like, who like it's like it? fucking rent. I know. If, if even that, like, it's crazy. That's a, and 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 like, if this bill did student debt forgiveness, $15 an hour and Medicare for all, then, then you could go. And I would be the first to say, I'm, I don't like Biden. You and I don't, we don't like Biden. I, I would say, well, I'll give them credit. They passed these, I guess the, enough people pressured them to pass these three things, which these are life-changing things. These will mm -hmm. make everybody's lives in America better. This is something we can point to five, 10 years from now and go, and I'll be the first to say, I didn't like Biden. I didn't vote for him. There's a lot of awful shit, but he gave us this, this, and this. And that helped the economy, but they didn't, they didn't do it. And they waited three weeks to give us this 1400 and a month to give us this $1,400. <laughs> it's like, it's just... uh, I mean, I'm going to buy fucking Bitcoin with that $1,400 personally. <laughs> <laughs> Which it's just, <sighs> it, it's, it's fucked up because when all these news people come out and say how much this is changing things and how great it is and how all these people are going to be out of poverty, it really sets people up. And then when the fucking other shoe drops and they're like, wait, now there's nothing. That means it's just going to be more upsetting to people. I know. You know, I, I talked to a lot of people when um, when they were getting the six hundred dollar checks and people were just like thrilled, like they were living a life they hadn't lived before. All these people had been making shit money and now they were getting a living what a living wage would be. Yep. And now. And now that's going to be gone. Well, how do you think that's going to work? Like, uh, and if you don't have pop, if you don't have a, a, a popular answer for that, if you don't have, you know, a socialist answer or some sort of answer for people, well, then you're going, you're going fascist. Those are the, those are the choices. And they're setting us up for pure fascism. Yeah. Because, because here's what's going to happen. Like you said, a lot of people are like un their unemployment benefits were better than their crappy job, which shows you how, and the unemployment was not great, but it, it's, it's, it shows you how crappy the jobs are in this country for most people. Um, yeah. and so that unemployment is going to run out in September. Now, maybe they've been paying their rent. Maybe not. If they've been paying their rent. Okay. They're still back to their shitty job. H how are they going to, that they're still back to barely getting by. That's the people who were paying their rent with unemployment, right? 
Yeah. Now about all the people who didn't pay the rent, like unemployment wasn't yeah. enough or whatever. Um, what's going to happen to them and, and all these, 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 you know, real commercial real estate and regular real estate and the rent bubble and all these things we've been talking about, that's all going to come due. then what? And so this country is going to be faced with maybe finally people will like really rise up and realize we're in class warfare. It's not I don't, Republican versus I just Democrat, don't, but you still, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think so I either. Think because, it, yeah. I mean, we sat through this, we sat through this and what, you know, we saw the, the mile long car lines and, and we saw all this shit and nothing happened. Like nobody, everyone's just, you know, hanging out. Not the lack of anger is like, I, I said this on our podcast, like Eric Garcetti shouldn't be able to drive through the streets of Los Angeles without people throwing fruit at his car and yeah. just trying to run him off the road. Like he's done a terrible job and killed people because of COVID. He's just done a bad job and nobody, nobody cares. And we're just goes about their business. And it's just like, I, I don't think there's, I used to think that there was a level of anger that would rise up, but now I, I just don't think it's a thing that's going to happen. I think that what we're Brazil, right? I mean, th that's what we become because there is no, I, apparently there's no bottom to, to the shit that we'll take. We'll just keep taking it and, and people will get kicked out of their houses and then there'll be shanty towns and everyone just be like, yeah, this is what we're doing. Like, I, I just don't see, any fight back from anybody the only fight back we've had is black lives matter and that's because they're literally fucking killing people mm -hmm. but apparently i mean this just seems like you know putting and even the, that got put to sleep by obama when the sports leagues yes. went on strike and that yes. was the moment i talked about this with justin jackson because he told yep. me he was, in the, he was an nfl player they had a scrimmage set he goes the nba the, the bucks uh went on strike for a playoff game mm-hmm and everyone was on strike. There was like three days. And I remember going, this is the moment. This is it. Like you couldn't escape it. And I said a lot of, you know, because sports, you, you know, this, you're a sports fan that there's people from all walks of life. And look, there was, there was, I know there was all lives matter and blue lives matter. People watching like doc rivers cry and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And it was powerful. And they were probably like, man, maybe, maybe my sports here, maybe this isn't right. And if the, if the leagues and it was forcing white America to like really because it was George Floyd and then they shot Justin uh, uh, Jacob Blake in the back, mm -hmm. and it was like this was forcing white America to go wait a minute, man. And now there's not even sports. You don't even get the reprieve. Oh, if I, sports is back, yay! Everything's not as bad. No, we're shutting it down. It's forcing you. And Obama comes in, and everyone goes back to sleep. And I I, I remember like you and I would talk all summer. And into the fall leading up to the election, you and I both thought like there was going to be what happened on January 6th. I thought that was going to happen around yeah. November and it was going to last yeah. for two, three weeks. And Trump, it was going to be a full on civil war. And then even when the, even when January 6th happened that morning, I was like, oh, man, this is going to be awful. A gunfight and it's going to spill out and all the state capitals and this is it. Nope. They went in. They took selfies. <laughs> stole a podium and, and I mean, like some of them tried to kill some people, you know, yeah. but not, not enough. They tried to, and then they weren't met with, with force. If black lives matter would have done that, they would have been mowed down in the Capitol. And then yeah. there's some outrage and stuff. And okay. The FBI is arresting people. Okay, fine. One of them is the, the guy we were friends with, but, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I agree. I really, I thought, I mean, what I remember when you and I were talking a lot about it, we're like, man, this is America's going to collapse. It's going to collapse. They've just kicked the can down the road financially. Americans don't yeah. get angry enough to really rise up and do anything. They're easily, they're easily like quelled. They're easily like, oh, they're, they get, they get played by their masters. Oh, so so the Democrats are especially are just amazing how much they get played by their fucking masters. Like they, they all act like they, they think better and they want, health care for everybody but then right. you know plus it comes out and says ah we can't do it and they all go we can't do it and that's the end of that like it's just like it's fucking amazing to watch like who, who how, how much how long do you have to sit and shit before you get mad at the people who are supposed to be your politicians like I when guess, do you get mad at them when do you get fucking mad at them i don't know T i mean 10 years we've had 10 11 years no the the financial crisis was 08 but 08, 09, 2010, those years were like really bad. So we're talking at least 10, 11, 12 years of like, that didn't do anything. Occupy Wall Street didn't. Edward Snowden, like none of it, none of it. Trump was going to wake people up. And, and I thought there was going to be this thing. And I remember you and I talked and we were both like, there could be this crazy, this, it's going to collapse, it's going to collapse. And then we both kind of, you know, at different times went, or 
America's just going to limp along. Like we're like, if Biden wins, they're just going to limp along. But I, you know, we, we don't, we don't have a lot of time to, no. if people want to have, if people want to have like a big overthrow or whatever the fuck we're talking about, we don't have a lot of time because if you look around the country, Republicans are stripping voting from everybody everywhere. Yeah, I, I, this was for me and you brought up Trump and we, we thought that would be the, that was always Susan Sarandis thing. Like, well, that'll fucking wake people up. That actually isn't. And people were like, Susan Sarandis was wrong. And you're like, yeah, but that's, but that's not the problem. The problem is she was wrong because she had too much faith in the American people <laughs> that they would not sit in shit. And they decided to sit in shit. And so when, when you, when you think about that moment of like, when is this going to, flip and i always go back to that susan Sarandon thing because i had the same sort of thing i had that same idea of like well if trump does get and i didn't want him to get elected i was one of those people that were like this guy's fucked and i didn't you know i i think hillary would have been better i always said that just because he's a fucking psychopath but the other part of me was like well if he does get elected people will fucking it'll be it'll be this big come to moment and it wasn't yeah. It just nope. wasn't. And, and 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 that lives on the Democrats for not putting up an actual fight about what this should be and how we should change things. And I just don't I don't know what it what it will take. Like, look, think about everything we've just been through with, the, like you said, the the housing crisis in 2008, all the way up till now. I mean, what is it going to fucking take? What? I can't, I don't know. I don't think there is a thing anymore. I think that no. we just sit here and we stew in it. And my thing, my other big thing about Hillary losing the silver lining was always for me. Well, the state houses are incredibly important. And when 2020 comes, if, if Hillary loses and, and Trump in there, there'll be a massive reverse and Democrats will take over tons of state houses. And then we'll be able to reverse all the gerrymandering and all the shit. And what did they do? They ran Biden and yeah. down ticket Republicans swept everything. And it's like, well, there you fucking go. So even my silver lining turned out to be shit. Uh, there was we, we all had this. I wasn't happy Trump won either. I didn't vote for Hillary, but I, I was like, God, you know, Trump's awful. Well, you don't need to. You live in California. You don't need yeah. to vote for anybody. Yeah. No. And and. But I we all had this sort of like. Americans are going to really wake up and you saw more people get involved politically. You saw more stuff and you're like, okay, okay, okay. And then, you know, uh, Bernie, you know, but the democratic party didn't own it. They didn't, they didn't do a reckoning. Democratic voters didn't want to own it. And they just said, Trump bad, Trump bad. And then the democratic primary, you yeah. know, there was, uh, there was literally Bernie Tulsi and Mike Gravel were the only people that even I, even, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, it was like that was the only shot we had. Gravel had no chance, um, and Tulsi quit, and Bernie never reached out to. I mean, he didn't. I, I, you know, the Bernie campaign was just mystifying to me. But and and then and then as we talked about, you know, he just quit a year ago, and that March fifteenth debate is his was his opportunity to say, "I'm the guy to lead us through this," and that could have been Bernie, this socialist revolution. Everyone would have been like, "Yes, get it, socialism." Now we need it. He could have he could have ran that. The whole summer, I'm Trump. I, capitalism has killed us. I'm going to give you socialism. I'm going to give you free health care. I'm going to give student debt forgiveness. And everyone would have gone, yes, 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 yes. And you're not Trump. Great. Love it. And, and you're right. It's just like there, we keep expecting these. We expect people to wake up and they won't, they just, they just they won't. won't. They're not, they're not they going to. And the, the, there's people waking up what, you know, watching this show, watching your show, Jimmy, but that's it. I mean, and, and God bless those people, but there's not enough of us. It's the sad reality is we are, we are politically homeless when we all get together at a live show and that opens up and I see the fit and that those are great. Those live shows, Jimmy show, your show, my, and Ron and I, so they're great shows, but there's not enough of us to do a goddamn thing. There's just not enough. And the Democrats are part of the deep state, just like the Republicans. And they're going to get somebody like Bernie to sheep herd progressives and everyone's going to cheer in the streets when, you know, 
a rapist warmonger and the guy that wrote the 94 crime bill and the woman that put a hundred thousand black men behind bars gets elected and they're going to go. That's it. I mean, it's like, and I just, America doesn't want to learn. They don't, they just, they, they, there's they're like addicts who are gonna, and you know, this, and we've talked about this, like when someone's an addict and you try to get them help, you try to get them sober and they just keep making the same mistake and they're blaming everybody else. They never take responsibility for themselves. You just have to get out of the way because yeah. if you, they're, otherwise they're going to take you down with them. Yeah. I, I mean, there, there's a, there's a real, you know, the real problem is that our system of government is a failure, like the way it's set up and the, and Chile was the exact same government and it fell after 150 years. Like they don't, they don't, these presidential republics don't last. But like the pragmatic belief system is what's what lead, leads us here. And, and and to me, the greatest example of that is go read what Ralph Nader wanted to do as president and then think about where we are. And he was considered this heretic, lunatic, yeah. fringy guy. And if we did everything he wanted, we wouldn't be here. There would be no Trump. None of, none of this would have happened. And the person who was supposed to be the reasonable pragmatic one lost because he fucking sucked. But also he wouldn't have done anything to change this. We're on a path to fascism and the lack of recognition of that is incredible. And they just think, well, we voted out Trump. So now it's gone. It's not gone. It's look at what they're doing in all those states, all the Republicans. It, it's not gone. It's it's getting worse. This is just increasing. They're increasing their power. It's power by minority rule. You can't you can't have pragmatism to slowly change things when the minority rule is happening. It's minority rule. It's taxation yeah. without representation. There is no pragmatism when it comes to that. There is fucking figure out how to stop it. Or they end up increasing their minority rule. That's it. Those are the two options. So what do you do? I don't know what to do anymore because nobody wants to do anything. <laughs> I know it's like, and then, and then even like force the vote, like Jimmy comes out and says, Hey man, you know, if I said something bad about it, forgive me, I'll forgive you. Let's, let's do this. Let's make this happen. And Chank and Sam Cedar were on board initially. And then, <laughs> and then that Sam happened. Cedar's just, fa Sam Cedar is fascinating to me because, you know, for years he was going after Jimmy and I, the thing about Jimmy with that, with that, thing he went a little too far with the yelling and it upset people and i totally fucking get that he's also mad like he's everyone should be mad right now but the thing that's fascinating to me about sam is um and i think i've told your audience this before but when i during the trump uh hillary election i talked to an msnbc producer and he told me flat out msnbc is pushing for trump because they want him to win the primary and then then we MSNBC will take him down in the general election. And that was an MSNBC producer saying that to my face. And, and when I watch people like Sam who, who go off and, you know, attack Jimmy all the time, I always think you're part of a greater evil. I mean, yeah. I get that you think that Jimmy's doing damage or whatever and whatever you can have that opinion. I don't give a shit, but you're working, you're working for a really bad, bad company like you're you're going on the air with the people who help give us trump and and a war machine like you're you're part of a network that is full of intelligence guys and military guys and brian williams almost having an orgasm when a missile flies off in, into syria and so i just i just don't know what to do with that like who so Jimmy's Jimmy's the bad guy and all this, but then people who support that are the good guys. Again, it's it's bigger picture shit. Like, what no one in the it. fuck is happening in that circumstance? Like you, anybody who is associated with MBS, MSNBC right now is a fucking piece of shit. Like you're part of something really bad, and we saw that during the election. We saw, I mean, dude, when Bernie won, was it New Hampshire? MSNBC acted like it was nine eleven. Chris Matthews lost his mind so much he got taken off the network. Yeah. Joanne Reed was practically fucking crying on air. Like she almost couldn't talk. Why would you want to be associated with that? How are you how are you on the left if you're fucking associated with that? 
Yeah. I just don't oh. get it. I don't get no, it. No, I mean, that's the thing. There's, there is no, I mean, this is, and they, they refuse to see it because they've been so duped and propagandized. They don't even realize. I remember watching a, one of Rachel Maddow like a year or two ago was doing a segment on Russia, Russia, Russia. And it was literally sponsored by Boeing. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I'm like, is nobody, why nobody sees this? Like nobody, nobody it's, like it's, it's just so much, it's so much bigger picture stuff. And, and it's like, yeah, a lot of what's happening now in this country is because we're giving all of our money to the fucking military industrial complex. Like, what is it? Seven hundred and fucking fifty billion a fucking quarter or some shit. What? I don't know what the amount is, but it's re-upped all the time. You're like, oh, they just did another seven hundred and fifty billion. And it's like. Like, I get I get that people don't like when people yell at our our politicians and stuff like, OK, that's fine. But man, bigger picture shit like there's a bigger fucking animal out here that is really fucking bad and i think the left is just eating itself alive i think that yes. every time i go online leftists are screaming at each other and and it's like you you need to not be able to like the other people on the left and all work for a common good and they're doing you the bidding of the ruling to. class like i and when everyone went after jimmy i said congratulations big pharmaceutical companies thank you like you're helping prevent Medicare for all so that, you know, seven year old girl that had to have a lemonade stand to pay for brain surgery. You helped make that happen. So congratulations. Well, I can, I can understand there. I can understand the argument of that from, from a strategic strategic standpoint, if you want to make the argument that, that that wouldn't be a good thing. Okay. I can meet you and have that argument about whether or not it's good to push for a vote. I, I think it, I think it would be a good idea to push for a vote at that time. But I also am willing to talk to you about it's not a good idea, but that's not what it was about at all. It became about personalities and everything else. And now that everything is passed and we've had some time, uh, I think I think what the squad was looking for didn't happen. I mean, you know, Nancy Pelosi shouldn't be speaker. There's no reason she, they, they allowed her to be speaker. They also allowed uh they they could have put up a stink and st and stopped the covid bill and said i want we want we need a minimum wage or this isn't happening i don't know when they're going to use their power to do stuff like that to me that was bare minimum just say well no one's getting anything until you do a minimum wage and put it all on the fucking west virginia and those other fucking just put it all on them and go no one's getting anything cuz these motherfuckers and see what happens. Just fight the fucking fight, man. Just fight yeah. it. Fight the goddamn fight. I don't They're not look, going. I'm not gonna fucking I'm not gonna yell at him. Like I that that to me the thing is like don't it doesn't matter if you fucking yell at him or not. Like uh, the worse than me, I'm just I'm just endlessly disappointed in them to the point that I don't even want to yell at him. Like I, I don't yeah. Nancy uh, Pelosi shouldn't be speaker. You, they could have lopped her head off, would have been the best thing they could have fucking done. It's and then yeah. Just fight. I mean, David Sirota was saying that when the bill was going through, he's like, the fucking squad should step up and stop it and make sure there's a minimum wage increase and say that's that's our bare minimum. That's our bare minimum. How is that not our bare minimum? It should just yeah. be our bare minimum. I, I don't get it. And so I, I just watch it and I, I don't know what it's another reason I'm totally besides people not rising up like we did put these people in there and I, I'm just not seeing very much. I think that I think that the bill Biden passed would have been a lot worse if there wasn't a lot more leftists in the country. And they're, they are responding to that a bit. But as far as programs over a long period of time, just don't uh, no, just, just no, nothing. And they're never going to, you know, like the, I, I, I look, I was a big proponent of the squad. So were you. And I, I, I have nothing. I have no, I have no faith in them at all. They're not going to do anything. I just, I, I, they're all talk. They're going to send out amazing tweets and, you know, AOC has 12 million Twitter followers. She is one of the most powerful people in Congress. She could send yeah. out one tweet to say, everybody show up and protest because we want this. We demand Medicare for all right now, this day, this time, I'm going to be there, demand it. She won't do that. And so, so, and, and like, don't yell at them. I fuck off. I mean, like you and I watch <laughs> those sports, like you, I mean, how many, how many times have you seen the home team get booed because they're playing bad? People say, fire that coach. He sucks. Oh. And that, and no, that I, that I agree with. And I, and, but I, I just think that the mindset is such that if you yell at politicians, it's almost a negative, not because 
you're yelling at politicians, it's because the response of people is so crazy to me. Like they're not, they're not my, no one's my friend who's in office. I know. No, I'll yell, I'll yell at anybody. I mean, when Bernie, when Bernie supported uh, Sesta, the, the thing that fucking made it so hard for sex workers and made them go back on the streets and shit. I was fucking screaming at him. Like I'll fucking yell at these people Yeah, when they do shit that I don't agree with. And also if you're a politician, people are going to fucking yell at you. Like that's the fucking game. Like it's just, yeah, get it is out. what it is. You can't handle it. Like, but, but I just think the problem is, is, is that other people, other leftists can't handle it. And yeah. then, and now we have, look, look, whatever, whatever we want to say, whatever jimmy started it ended up creating a giant rift and whether it was right or wrong i personally think it would have been a good move it still ended up a huge negative and i don't know you know is that is that the way jimmy handled it is that the response like it's just it's just a whole mix of things and it's super fucking complicated but at the end of the day we're a headless monster we don't have any leaders yep and no one's guiding us. And so we're all attacking each other. I mean, I probably shouldn't have said that stuff about Sam Cedar, but I just, I, 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 my brain can't wrap itself around, around how much MSNBC is part of the military industrial complex and how much they push Trump and how that is people act like that's fine. Like, I just don't, I can't, my brain can't wrap itself around that. Nope. It's well, it, Sam Cedar's not on the left. He's not a progressive. He's just a propagandist for the war machine. I mean, like it's just, it's I just, don't know. I don't know what, you know, I don't watch him. Um, we had a big fight, uh, six, five, five, six years ago. Um, and I stopped talking to him and I blocked him. Uh, so I don't pay attention to him at all. I just know I watched him attacking other leftists all the time. That's his job. I mean, that's and that's what MSNBC does is the is the, what which is the the behest of the Democratic the corporate Democratic establishment, which is crush progressives, crush them, either get them to acquiesce, you know, because AOC and the squads have all been promised something. That's why now it's mama bear time because they're that they, they've all been promised I, you know, something. I don't know if that's true. I I, I think that you, I think I really think you get in there and it's like a, a brain distortion thing happens. I think that you get in there and over time you're like, this is how we do it. And they just slowly work you. I mean, it's almost like a cult. I think they just fucking work you until you think this is how we do it. And you keep doing that thing. You know, the one who the one who really fought Katie Porter, like Katie Porter fought the Democratic establishment and her. And the result was she's no longer on the finance committee. Like, right. She really went. She went toe to toe with them and she lost. That's that's what we need. I, I, but I don't feel like they, I don't feel like they sold out or promised anything. I think they just became part of the machine. I think it's part of that. But I bet you they, they dangled something in front of AOC and said, oh, 2028, you'll be VP, whatever. Maybe. maybe. I mean, uh, but maybe, I agree. It's, it's just like they dangled shit in front of Elizabeth Warren and she fell for it all during, <laughs> during the campaign and then got her ass handed to her. I mean, talk about someone getting fucking played. Like <laughs> you could see that a mile away. <laughs> oh, I know. They gave her nothing. They gave her nothing. Like unreal, unreal. Um, well, all right, dude, before you go, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you, where do you see this? Like, how do you, I, I mean, I, I, I said this conversation earlier today with Ron Placone. I mean, like there's days where I see little victories, little local victories and I go, Oh yeah, maybe this, maybe that. And, and maybe we can build a socialist Hollywood and yeah, you know, <laughs> and, and then, and then there's days I'm just like, good luck. Like this is place is done. I'm going to, I'm going to protect myself because, I'm sick of yelling into the wind and you know, I feel like I'm going to the beach with a dustpan trying to clean up sand. Like it's just America's doomed to fail. I don't know. Someone asked me the other day why I'm only attacking Democrats. And I said, well, number one, I think they're a big part of the problem and they need to fight back. But number two, it's self-preservation because I think that this country is going to fall into fascism. And when they look at my record, they'll see me attacking <laughs> Democrats. <laughs> Yeah, I don't based on what we're seeing in all the states around the country and how they're taking away all the voting rights and just stripping shit. Unless Democrats get rid of the filibuster and go fucking balls to the wall, 
this ends up no way except in fascism. Mm -hmm. I don't see how it can. I mean, everyone needs to understand they're fucking crazy fascists. My kid. They're crazy. The Q shit, like half of them believe it now. So get ready. In 2022, there's going to be 60 QAnon people in Congress. Like this is going to spread. It just gets bigger and bigger. It's part of their mainstream. And that's fascism. Like fascism is the cornerstone is conspiracies and Mm -hmm. love of military and hate of brown people and and we're there, man. And and the fight isn't enough. Like you could, you could like the biggest thing to stop fascism is Medicare for all. Yep. It would just, rel- it would just calm so many fucking people down. We, you and I talked about this years ago when we went on Will's podcast, we said that Obamacare will squeeze the middle class and it will cause all kinds of turmoil. And it has, it squeezed the fucking middle class. And so I don't see any way out of this because I don't see anybody who's, going to step up and fight for it no at least we we need the democratic party to fight and they're they're not fighters they're just you know they're doing like passing cobra uh stuff and like <laughs> it's all band-aid surface shit and they need to drop a fucking nuke they need to make puerto rico a state they need to make mm-hmm. uh, uh dc a state they need they need to pass a a really strong voting rights bill they need to fucking come hard and hit and they don't they don't have it and so i don't know what i don't i don't know i don't see any way out of this myself no, I mean, if you can I, tell me one i i mean the only and this is like the sliverest of hopes of of just like if the people's party can get some momentum and get some people in congress and the senate in 2022 that could do it um because but it's a small little party and it's hard to get off the ground and the left loves eating itself. So they'll try to eat this. I don't know. I mean, unless there's like some big defections, like if Nina Turner were to win and then leave the democratic party and join the people's party and then some big name people defected. And then, but I, even that, I mean, this is real fucking hail Mary pass. Yeah, The people's, the people's party is, um, it's too late. It seems like to me that it's too late in the game to do this. And also, when the Jimmy thing happened and everyone took sides, they took they went with Jimmy and a lot of people got mad at him. As a party, I th- I thought that was a really dumb move because you kind of got to stay out of that shit. And I know they wanted it, but it's also like if you see the left fracturing and you and you want to be a new party, we well, you, you just fucking you just lost a bunch of people. And they went pretty hard. I was watching it. They went pretty hard. And right or wrong, it's mm-hmm. not It's not the... That's when you talk about pragmatism. Like, maybe don't jump into that one. Is that, well, the, is I, that what you want when you're building a party? I don't know. I mean, I, I get just like, we're for Medicare for all, so we're for force the vote. Like, it to me, it felt very much like we have a simple platform, and so mm-hmm. we're going to fight for this. Um and I don't know that that being that hard on Jimmy is going to be the thing that would, you know, dissuade people from getting involved with the People's Party. It'll just be if they don't have the money and the organizational, if they if their infrastructure isn't there on a on a grassroots on a street level, that's what kills so many organizations. It's a good idea. There's a good couple of people in charge or whatever, but then if the, if if the, uh, on the street level, if it's not being organized, I don't know. I mean, if they win a seat or two, then that that could really change things. Yeah, but, but again, how much time? Yeah. How much time do you have? I know not much. Like what, I mean, uh, the way I see this playing out is 2022, the Republicans take over the Senate and the House and they impeach Biden. Yeah. Well, right. he's not going to be able, he's not going to be there. I mean, I, I don't think Biden makes it to the end of this year health wise. I think Kamala is going to take over at some point because his his cognitive decline just keeps getting worse and worse. And I, he won't finish his term. That's that's there's he no won't. I haven't been paying attention to him at all. Is he and not? He doesn't know where the Pentagon is. So um, well, that it's somewhere in Washington, D.C. That's fair. That's fair. Um, <laughs> Commander in chief doesn't need to know exact, you know, whatever. Like I mean, uh, we all we all saw it during the election. We knew what he was. I mean, it, it is what it is. And the, the the long term game plan was always to have Kamala take over. But 
you know, they, they aren't the Republicans aren't they, they're not interested in democracy. And, and no pragmatism is playing the democracy game with people who are trying to set you on fire. Like, it's just not how you fight this. You have to go hard at them as they're going at you and try to salvage something. And so whoever's in there, they're going to impeach at some point. I mean, they fucking yeah. impeach Clinton over a fucking blowjob. Like, they don't give a shit. They, they tried to impeach Trump twice. So the Republicans are going to now it's our turn. I mean, like, they, yeah. they're going to say, this is our turn. And it's just going to be a peach. You know, anyone they don't like, they just, I mean, like Newsom, who I don't like, but they're trying to recall him because, they, you know, the, the, anyone who gets in there, they're just, the other party is going to try to impeach or recall or whatever. And they're, the Democrats are going to get cleaned out in the midterms. And then the Republicans, if they don't, if they don't, if they aren't successful with the impeachment, they're going to run a charismatic ideologue. Trump was just an idiot. He didn't have, he didn't have the ideology nor the cunning of like a dictator. If he did, he would have used November. And I mean, what he would have said, I'm not leaving. And we would be, we'd be in a full blown civil war right now. And Trump would still be in power. Like if he, if he was like cunning, like a dictator, like historically has been, so they're going to run someone that's going to be like a charismatic Mike Pence, who's this, you know, evangelical nut job, but he's not charismatic. It'd be somebody with that type of ideology, but charismatic. And, well, and he'll probably come from showbiz. It could be Tucker yes. Carlson or something really just crazy. You know, it could be a, it could be a podcaster or one of these fucking YouTube dudes who are on the right. Like it, 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 the door's wide open. There's no more like, is it a politician? It's the door's wide. It could be open. Owen Benjamin. I mean, it could be, it could be, <laughs> I mean, literally, like it could be, it could be Vince Vaughn. It could be anybody you know, like any sort of psycho like that, you know, it'll be Candace Owens. I mean, like they'll run whoever they got to run. And that person will be nuts and evil, but smart and cunning and diabolical to unite people in a Trump just said, me, me, Trump, Trump, Trump. I'm the best. Yeah. That's all he knew how to do was be a narcissist. He didn't have any long-term plan. He didn't have any Machiavellian instincts or anything like that. This next person will. And yeah. the Democrats are going to go, yeah, but we gave you pragmatic centrism, you know, and, and <laughs> Americans, you know, the economies, as we talked about earlier, the economy will have collapsed. The stimulus will have run out. The bread lines will be longer and Americans won't, are not going to wake up and rise up. They're going to be fighting with each other, um, blaming this party. It'll be the, when, when the economy goes belly up, Democrats, college educated, liberal, former friends of ours in show business will be blaming it on Trump and the right will be blaming it on Biden. And neither of them will see that the whole system's broken and it's wall street and the billionaires that have fucked him. America refuses to, to swallow that pill. They just don't want to. They just don't want to accept yeah. that they're in class warfare. And so they'll keep allowing themselves to get divided, distracted, and afraid. And there'll be some new boogeyman, some new monster, some false flag from Iran. And we got to ramp up China. the wars because they're coming. China, yeah, Russia, whatever. It'll be one of them or all three. And and America will just sink into fascism and implode and, and it'll just keep eating itself. But, and meanwhile, I mean, are, by the way, by the way, the environment's still collapsing. Just a little yeah, FYI. I mean, so that's the, that's always the thing that's in the back of my head. I remember when, do you remember when the, when the, um, the tea party dudes took over, they, they rolled into Congress and everyone was like, oh, this is bad. And, and the Republican plan was like, well, we'll invite, we'll invite them in and we'll slowly co-opt them and, and sort of, you know, let them see all the gold and jewels that we can get by being in Congress and they'll see the light. And then they brought them in and they didn't, they didn't see the light. They stayed ideologically driven in this, right. And they weren't even the bad ones. I know now the bad ones, now the Q people are coming and they're like, what if the tea party people were crazy? <laughs> like, it's like, yes, it's like the next wave of like, Holy shit. And, and it's just like, what the fuck do you do with that? Like, what do you do with that? They're, they're all, I mean, in States like Arizona, they, they condemned, uh, or whatever they did, the, the actual Republican party condemned McCain's wife for not supporting Trump. Like they, it was like an official condemnation by the part. Like, you're just like, man, this is going to get fucking crazy. And so I don't, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know. I, I don't see any solution. I would love it if people had a solution. Like I would love it. I mean, I would, if Sam Cedar had a solution, I would follow him into the fucking ocean. You know what I mean? If anybody right. had a solution, 
Sure. I would be like, let's go fucking do this. But I don't see anybody with a solution to what this is. I mean, there are people on the left who have no power who are saying what the solution is, which is give people material goods that they can survive on. And maybe you'll and, and then, of course, go out voting rights and do all that stuff, make make a couple of places states. But I don't see anybody really pushing for that stuff. And so I don't know what ha I don't know. There's no I leader, and so thing. there's no plan. I mean, and the things that yeah. we keep saying would help Medicare for all, student debt forgiveness, blah, blah, blah. No one's the, the, the people in charge aren't listening. They don't give a fuck. They're not going to do it. And the Sam Cedars of the world are going to say, yeah, those are great, but now's not the time, like, or whatever their thing is. Like, we'll wait till there's yeah, a worse now's pandemic. Now's not the time is the, yeah, now's not the time is the only, is the, is the main talking point. And I'm hearing it now from friends who are liberals. Ah, we shouldn't push too far left. And you're like, okay. Well, anything, anything, any reasonable plan is now, quote, too far left because we're so far right. I mean, we're talking about sending our kids to fucking die. Like, what? It's, how do you want this to go? It's it's America's gone insane, literally gone insane. It's an insane asylum. But, you know, good luck. Um, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, I wish I could. I wish I could sit here and be more positive for people because people are always like, "Well, you're a doomsayer." And then I have a bunch of people always, who always come back to me and go, "Man, I thought that thing you said was really crazy, and when you said it, I thought it was fucking nuts, and then it turned out to be true." And I'm like, "Yeah, but you always call me a doomsayer." And then I say things, and you go, "Ah, that guy's out of his fucking mind." And then it happens, and you come back and you go, "Oh, you were right about that." And I say something else, and you go, "No, that's crazy." And I'm like, "Oh, that's the pattern. <laughs> that's the pattern." And my thoughts aren't genius. I'm just they're just leftist thoughts that's all they are that's why they're coming true is because we keep being right yes i know i i i don't i don't fucking read tea leaves i just listen to lefties and and other people and like just just wall street economists if particular with the economy going you can't print this much money and not and have nothing happen like it's not like these are all and and so i'm just like okay you know, the UN report comes out in 2018. We got 12 years to fix climate change or that we're doomed. Okay, it's 2021. I'm, I'm, I'm not crazy. I'm not that I'm, I, they, you told me about this and now no one. And it's like, the only thing that I have, have any sort of like positivity. I mean, I say little local victories and I say, get, in, get involved yeah. locally. That's great. And then I say, buy Bitcoin, man. That's your chance to get the fuck <laughs> out of, I'm telling you, man. Like when it hits 500,000, a million a coin, you're going to go. And I've already had fans go, Graham, thanks for telling me. Thanks for telling me. I go, just buy fucking Bitcoin, start learning about crypto, buy some of the other coins. And if you do that, but then, you find but then what about the environmental impact of, of crypto? Like then you get, then you have that problem. Like we're environmentalists. And then if you jump in, it's this weird, it's this weird spiral where self-preservation means getting in on something like Bitcoin, but then Bitcoin is fucking up the environment. It's such a fucking well, here's the thing, and that's true. I mean, yes, there's a big there's a big power drain that they're, they're absolutely. I mean, nothing is worse on the environment than the United States military. So there's that, but yeah. also oh, yeah. Bitcoin was created by a person or persons that are were geniuses. So there's a solution out there. In the meantime, you got a Bitcoin mine, just put some fucking solar panels on that thing. You know, like like uh, th there's there's I think the answer to that. And it's a legitimate concern of, of cryptocurrencies in general is the, the, the power drain of the mining. It's a legitimate concern. But I think there's enough, like there's there's already green energy that can be applied to it. China, which has a lot of Bitcoin mines, has already oh, do addressed. They really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're coming. They've already launched their, their own um, digital oh. currency. Um, oh, I didn't know that. I know yeah, they, they in fact gave... A bunch of people in this town, uh, twenty five. They they gave out fifteen million dollars equivalent to people. Like they gave everybody twenty five dollars on this app to just go use it, try it, go buy some coffee or whatever, yeah. and see what it's like. And people are like, "Oh, cool!" Just to just to get people oh, wow. used to it. And so they've That's already started to because they they've have a huge smog issues and stuff like that. But but China has been since twenty fifteen has been out building green energy, you know. So I I don't know. I think that solution is easily. It's already there. That that solution is there. People just need to embrace it and put the money into it. And I think a lot of the Bitcoin early adopters that are now Bitcoin whales are like, all right, well, I have the money because I bought 20,000 Bitcoin at five cents a piece in 20, <laughs> 2009. 
and and I'm seeing more of them get into the and, and address the environmental issue. So I'm not as worried about that personally. It's an it's a legitimate issue and deserves to be discussed. But I feel like the solution people are already like addressing it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the only thing I, I I'm happy about is the my crypto portfolio. <laughs> Yeah, it's really it's really weird to be a lot. You know, there are there are always periods of time where everything falls apart. You know, we're still better off than people in Europe in World War Two, right? And people yeah. in Europe in World War One. Like, there are periods where everything fucking falls apart, and and you have to live through them, and it's fucking rough. And we're in it. Like America is every single part of America that you look at is is run wrong <laughs> there there isn't there isn't a part of america where, that you look at and go well that's that's doing pretty good it, it's just not i mean name one thing name one fucking part of america wall street the, the economics yeah. yeah wall street schools like our healthcare system our political system what part what thing is going none of it like it's it is just a system that has been obliterated by corruption. The minute that that dude in like the 1910s or 20s wrote in the margins and he wasn't even a, he wasn't even on the Supreme Court. He was just a clerk or a reporter and he wrote in the margins corporations are people. It's all led here. Right. <laughs> and now and now it's corrupted every single part of America. Like every part of America is undermined by corruption people trying to make money off of shit and it's just i i always think about this i always think about what thing in america is going well schools colleges are fucked they're, they're, i mean your educational system is run on football <laughs> you think crypto's bad your educational system is running on football <laughs> like it's just what the the cops our military what what is what is the thing that's going well that name for one, can you name prisons? one thing for profit prisons for profit, are great. <laughs> like it's our, 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 it's our the way the way the way our agriculture system is, is oh. just a fucking disaster like water is now being purchased by comp what is the thing that's going well yeah. I, I always ask people this and I, no one gives me an answer name a big thing that a society's built on that's going well in America, that's constructed well. <laughs> it's a trip when you get into it. Oh, someone wrote porn is going well. That's right. Porn is going very well. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> it's really crazy when you start to think about it that way. It's really, it's a quite the brain fuck. No, it is. It's like I, when I was in Russia, they were like the quality of life in Russia has gotten better in the last 20 years. And it's largely due to Putin. Now you can, there's plenty of stuff to criticize Putin on, but they're like, he, and from the mid nineties, when it was chaos, when Yeltsin, who was an alcoholic that was propped up by the West was in there and there was, and the Soviet union collapsed. It was nuts. Um, the Russian mafia was, it was, it was mayhem. There's people die, ODing in the streets. It was, it was, it was mayhem. Everybody's life is better. Can anyone in the West say that? Can we yeah. say that as our um, lives got better in the last 20 years? Not mine personally. I mean, this YouTube thing's cool. Um, I mean, there's some cool things I've done. Oh, I've surfed, I've traveled, but I lost my home. I, which there, yeah. there went my retirement. Um, I have shitty healthcare. I mean, nothing's better. I can't point to anything and go, oh, it's that it's a lot better. I mean, the cost of living is higher we haven't fixed any major problems. There's no, we haven't, we haven't reversed climate change. We haven't, there's no big, there's no big, nothing. It's just like the homeless problem is worse in LA from when I moved there in 1995. Everything's worse. And it was all worse before COVID. Yeah. Like now it's 10 times worse. After COVID. 10 times worse. So it's like, you know, yeah, there's all these, there's just tons of the, our, our, our life expectation has gone down a year for white people. It's like two years for black people in and Latinx people like it. Infant was, mortality rates have gone up. We're like the we have yeah. the worst infant mortality rates of any industrialized nation. Yeah, we have third world conditions in America, and we have again before before COVID. Yeah, I mean before before COVID, UN 
inspectors came through and were like, oh, holy shit, this is worse than any third world country in the fucking world. Like, that was before. Yes, before. And now it's worse. So where can people go listen to the dollop? <laughs> We are doing a live dollop uh, on Thursday night. If you want to, um, we do we do a live one every once every couple of months, and it's you can only see it live. So it's it's buy a ticket. It's a live show, and I think it's up for forty eight hours after, and then poof, you can never hear it again or see it again. Nice. Uh, and we're trying to do visuals and stuff. So that's the main thing. I'm also on Instagram. I don't really go on Twitter anymore because uh, I can't handle the fighting uh, yeah. that's happening. It's it's hard to watch. Uh, that's about it. I'm not really active on any social media. I am considering. Tell me if you think this is a good idea. That guy, Greg, who is the uh, school board uh, member. I'm considering starting a Twitch in which I play his videos from the school board meetings and talk about it. <laughs> oh, dude, you have to do that. <laughs> You absolutely that is a must. That's you got it. I don't know. I don't even know how to use Twitch, but I'll sign up for that. Like, dude, you gotta do that. You have to do that. That's the greatest idea I've ever heard. Cause he he just goes off on these big speeches and they're so fucking dumb. They're like George W. Bush dumb. Like it's it's just oh, crazy. Dude. You have to do that. You you do it. Everyone in the chat is going, do it, do it, do it, do it. Play, 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 play. Everyone in the chat's telling you to do this. Yeah. This, is, this is a must. I gotta, I gotta figure out how to do Twitch, but I think that would be fun. I'll probably do that. <laughs> Ask your son. He'll tell you how to do Twitch. <laughs> he probably would in a second. <laughs> oh, well, dude. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, it was great of to course. talk to you. Of course, if you want to watch uh, Dave and Gareth compete in the Political Vigilante Game Show, it is only available oh. at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. Uh, the premium that was level. So fun. It was a blast. It was so fun, by the way. That game show was a blast. We just laughed our asses off, right? Like, we yeah. just laughed yeah. our ass. Every week, I've done three of them now, and we just laugh our asses off. It's so yeah, much fun. You, you should watch so. them. They're really great. I'm hoping when things open up, I'm going to make that into a real TV show on a sound stage with an audience and just do it. Um, <laughs> yes, it's great. Yeah. That's good. I'm going to awesome. just do it. Like, yeah. I don't care if I got to finance it myself. I'll use all my fucking crypto money to do it. I don't give a shit. Like, I'm going to just do it because it'll be it's just too fun. What what a fucking perfect what a what a perfect crypto guy. He makes a bunch of money off crypto and then blows it on a fucking game show. That is just so <laughs> a modern day idiot. What a <laughs> moron. Like, why don't you just buy fucking gold plated slippers? Like, what an idiot. <laughs> it's like buy a live tiger. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> just blow it on a game show. Oh my God, that'd be great. If it's just this fucking $100 million money pit. I don't know. He needed more buzzers. Or just like, I just shit it away. God, that'd be awesome. I can't wait to do that. Um, well, all right, dude. Thanks for uh, taking the time to come on the show. And uh, we'll uh, we'll see you soon. Yes. Thank you for having me. <laughs> all right, buddy. I would, I'll say, see you. I would say good times, but this was just depressing. Yeah, well, pretty much. Yeah. It's pretty, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty much a bummer. Thanks for bumming everybody out. Really appreciate you coming on the show. <laughs> and, you know, everybody check out the dollop on Thursday, I guess. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, where you can support the show. Also, I have a Bitcoin wallet, a Bitcoin cash wallet, and an Ethereum wallet in the show notes. We're taking cryptocurrency. I have a Coinbase affiliation link. We're going to be getting on some other exchanges. So that's how you support the show. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. YouTube is unsubscribing us at an alarming rate. I have a PayPal button at GrahamElwood.com. I even have a Venmo at Graham-Elwood. There's a lot of ways to support our show. We are getting crushed by YouTube. They're unsubs we've dipped under 73,000 subscribers because of YouTube. Thanks for supporting what we do.